Good afternoon, beloved brothers and sisters in Yeshua Messiah. Please forgive the glare here. I'm getting a glare in my in the glasses. Um, well, today is Tuesday, and uh, it's time to do my top five highly recommended videos, bonus videos, and more. Before I do that, I have also titled this, this video, All Things Are Possible, Lord, I Believe. The reason why I titled it this, it's based on a personal testimony that just took place two days ago. Um, I shared it with a few people that I'm, I'm close to um, um, by way of my phone, phone contacts. And I want to be able to share it with you all. And also be able to share with you scriptures that have to do with believing and about all things being possible to those that believe. So... First of all, I'm going to kind of speak a little in code. <laughs> but two days ago, um, it was a real, a real battle, spiritual battle, putting forth. And I shared some of it, and I didn't go into detail about some of the things that I've been going through um, prior to putting out the most recent video uh, titled Victorious spiritual warfare and it has to do with Nehemiah and it's part two to um, the part one spiritual warfare according to Ezra woe to the shepherds so there was there's so much that took place that day and some amazing things that took place that day that I um, it would take too long for me to really share but one of the things that took place that transpired before, I would, before uh, right after, actually after I, I did the video, and it, I was able to, it, it downloaded and it was ready for public view on the main channel and the backup YouTube channel. I get a call from, from my daughter's dad. He works graveyard shift, and as... As you all know, I believe I shared it that um, I, I asked for prayer because um, his job, they made, it, they made it mandatory for their workers to have to receive the jab by the middle of this month, which would have been like the 15th or 16th. And um, my daughter's dad already put, and I helped him with this, we, we, uh, I told him to make sure that he asked for the form for a religious exemption. And um, I took something that I, had, that I was given a link to online and took out two important, very, very important paragraphs from that uh, example, religious exemption letter to, to, in, to your employers. And uh, he put that down on this this form. And I would recommend those of you who are seeking for that to be brief, to not get into and put scriptures and all of that, or go into even detail about why you're concerned because of what you uh, know to be in these jabs. That is just going to create a very hostile situation. So you don't want to do that. And I've received that information from um, two uh, resources that um, are highly respected, one being a lawyer, and one, of course, you all know Peggy Hall. She had shared some tips about not meeting with your employers about these your, about your concerns, using their forms, and being as brief as you can when you when you um, write down your reasons as to why that you cannot take um, the job. So. As far as my daughter and my my daughter's, um, I would have to say my estranged husband's concerned, their faith wavered a bit here and there, and it was a real battle to stay strong in the midst of this wavering 
and wondering if it's going to go through and um, the weakness of my daughter's dad saying that if it doesn't, I'm probably going to have to do it because he has some issues, um, strongholds that he feels like he needs to work to continue to ma maintain these, these things that have a hold on him, okay? Um, different addictions, such. But I've been praying and interceding, praying for his salvation. And I, I've always prayed throughout, but in the last um, month, it's been very, very active, very strong, that the Holy Spirit has moved upon me to pray for him um, even deeper with with all the... and And then revealing to me that I needed to stand in the gap for him and ask for the Father to forgive him of his sins and that I hold no charge against him of all the things that he's done to me and my daughter. So in doing that, standing in the gap, and, and I say that because it says in, you know, Jesus gives us a couple examples in Scripture that um, when he was ready to heal, and one I believe it was the withered, man, the withered hand in the synagogue and the scribes and Pharisees were very upset because they felt like he was um, going against the, the law by healing on the Sabbath. And he basically said to them, um, just so you know that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins, and then he healed. He healed the man. So when Yeshua healed those he healed, he forgave them all of their sins. That's the way the manifestation of that healing takes place is because he has stood in the gap and has forgiven them of their sins so that they can receive their healing. So I know that just as he has the power, he's given us the power to forgive sins as well. Not only, um, yes, we do forgive the sins of others. We need to do that so that we will be forgiven. But I'm talking about forgiving sins on a level that will open up the door for them that whose sins that we are standing in the gap for to be forgiven so that healing can open up for them so the opportunities can open up for these ones that we are praying for and standing in the gap for so i prayed and said father i know in um bill's weakness that he is going to, he said he even though he knows this is wrong and he knows where this is leading in his weakness he he is willing to succumb uh, so, Father, I stand for him, and I ask that you forgive him for this weakness of, of wanting to do this. And I and I prayed and said, Father, if this happens, it's going to make it much more difficult, if not almost impossible, for him to receive salvation if he goes if he takes this jab, and it's going to put me and my daughter at risk. So I, I prayed about these things in earnest. Prayed. It was a time of prayer and fasting for the body of Christ, and prayer for this situation. And uh, there were times that I was even thinking, well, Father, if this isn't your will, I have to accept the fact that I might have to go away for a few months or whatever, so I'm not at risk. And so all these things were going on and I was bat battling with, and but I had peace throughout. I wasn't anxious. I wasn't stressed out. I had such peace knowing that the Father had this in his hands, whatever that meant. So... Um, as I was in prayer with a couple of sisters in Christ, amazing time of prayer and intercession for him and also for what I was going through. That night, right after I put put out the, the video, I received a phone call at about quarter to 11 at night. And um, it was, of course, Danny's dad, Bill. And he said, I have some good news. I said, okay. He said, they accepted, they approved the uh, religious exemption. So I, when I heard that, I said, that is wonderful news, Bill. And as soon as I got off the phone, I came in my room and I began to weep and cry and tell the father, I don't know how many times I said, thank you. But I was so grateful and so thankful for our sake, for my daughter's not only just for mine and my daughter's sake, but even for Bill's sake, that he stopped this attempt that would have 
created a lot of different situations and scenarios of uncertainty with this family. I mean, he would have guided and directed however this would have played out, but I knew he heard my prayers and heard your prayers, those who were praying about this. And I share that with you to give you all hope, not to give up. Don't don't listen to what they're saying and 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 telling you there's no way you'll you'll be approved. And those who haven't, don't give up. The Father has a way. If he closed that one door, he has another open door. So that's why the message that he's given me to share with you all before I I, I bring up these um, top bot, top five videos and um, bonus videos is that all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Think about that. Do you believe? Where's your faith? If you are having issue and, and you are struggling with believing that, that he is able to do the impossible, ask him to give you the strength. Ask him to help your unbelief, to give you that measure of faith that you need to believe and to take him at his word. And to know that his precious promises and his provisions and his protection for you, they are true. They're not meant for another brother and sister in Christ and somehow not meant for you. They're meant for us. But we need to believe. We, need, we do need to get our hearts right and our life right before the Father. That is very important because we don't want any doors open by which the enemy can create all kinds of havoc in our life. So I want to read to you scriptures that have to do with what about all things being possible to his people that believe. And that word believe, I will share with you really what that word believe means, not what many of us have believed it to mean. Because unfortunately, that word believe has been so watered down and the meaning of it has been to the, so abstract. And we have lacked the understanding of what it means to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us and what he is able to do for us. So I'm going to read Matthew 17, 20. And it says, uh, 17, 20, here you go. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Interesting, huh? So nothing is impossible for us, beloved, nothing. That's what our Yeshua said. But some things that we're going to have to deal with, some mountains, some strongholds, some areas that, we are, that we're having difficulty with cannot be accomplished except for by prayer and fasting. So it's a call also to fast that will help to move those mountains out of the way, whatever they are. He will show you when you ask him. And that mountain can be unbelief. That mountain can be anxiety and fear of what's going to happen to you and your family. Those are mountains that need to be moved out of your life because he has not given us a spirit of fear. He does not want us to be fearful about what's going to happen. He doesn't want us to be fearful of any bad report. He doesn't want us to be fearful or anxious because of all the intimidation and the lies and the threats that are taking place on every, every level, beloved, from the top on down. Let me go ahead and read Matthew 19, 26. Okay, here we go, 20. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things 
are possible. Do we know what all means? All means all. It, don't, it doesn't mean that in, with, with some things it's possible. But all means anything that you are going through and having to face. It is possible for the Father to move where humanly it looks and seems impossible. Matthew 9, 23. Is that Matthew? Let me see. No, Mark 9, 23. So we'll go to Mark 9, 23. Let's see. Yeshua said to him, if you can be believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now I know this is, it's interesting because each of the Gospels were, were written by, um, of course, Luke was written by Luke, who was a doctor. Matthew was written by the disciple Matthew. So they each wrote. They didn't compare notes. So this was every this is very important this particular when it says all things are possible to them that believe that was enough to where it was written by Matthew now it's written by Mark and it also speaks about it and says it in Luke there there are a lot of accounts that are similar in these these three three gospels and there's some things that uh, are emphasized a little more than other but that others in these gospels or some things that was not mentioned in one what was but was mentioned by another disciple in the account so but all three gospels said that all things are possible to them that believe yes with man it is impossible but with Yahuwah Elohim all things are possible so let's go ahead and go to Mark 10 27 see what we have here 27 but Jesus looked at them and said with men it is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible now it's mentioned twice in it's mentioned two times in the book of Mark that's how important this is for us to understand and grasp grasp this truth that belongs to all of us who put our faith and trust in our Lord and our Savior Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer, our Deliverer. So we just read Mark 10, 27. Now let's go to Luke 18, 27. Okay. But he said... The things which are impossible with men are possible with Elohim. There you go. Now it's in Luke. So all these three disciples are saying the same thing. Hebrews 11, 16. Okay. Here we go. Hebrews 11, 16. Okay, I'm at 11 there, and 16 is right here. But now, they desire a, a better, that is a heavenly country, therefore God is not ashamed. Wait a minute, this can't be it. <laughs> oh, Hebrews 11, 6, forgive me. <laughs> These glasses are not working too well for me, but I'm doing my best. The ones, my other ones, I don't know, I must have left it over the people who, who I fellowship with, their house. Um, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to Elohim must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And then, of course, you will read all the accounts of, of faith 
those walking by faith. So we must believe that he is who he says he is, that he has the power to do what is impossible with man, but is po possible to those of us who believe. We must believe that he is and that he rewards those who diligently and earnestly seek him on these things that we're that concern us, that are on our hearts, that weigh heavy on our hearts, things that we're facing right now, each and every one of us, this day and every day. So I want to give you the definition of the word believe. And then I have some, um, some more scriptures to read to you. Believe means to stand firm, to trust, to build up, or to support, to be held up by, established, steadfast. Steadfast in your trusting the Father, knowing that you stand firm in what he said he will do. You don't waver. You are established in knowing that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. You're not, you're not moved. You're steadfast. You're firm in your trusting and knowing what he's going to do, what he is able to do for you. Stand firm in what you are holding on to. Be steadfast and established in that which he said he's going to do. Let me read Genesis 15, 6. Okay. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Who believed? Abraham. He believed. He stood firm in his relationship and the call that he that was upon his life when Yahuwah said go. And all the things that he promised. He stood firm. He held firm to that. He trusted in what the Father said. Even without even seeing the promise. Because that promise has to do with us, the seed that would proceed and come out of Abraham. We are the fruit of that. And he remained steadfast in the things that he, that he was told to do. He was steadfast. He did not waver. He trusted. He fully put his trust in what the Father called him to do. Isaiah 28, 16. Okay, just past Isaiah. Sorry about that. There was a big truck with a trailer going by. Isaiah 26. Let's see where I have that. 28, 16. That's it. 28, 16. Make sure I get that right. 28, 16. Therefore, hear the word of Yahuwah, you scornful men who rule the people. Oh, wait a minute. 28, 16. Is this the right one? <laughs> No, I'm not in 16. Sorry about that. I was in 15. Here we go. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. So those of us who believe, when it's saying don't act hastily, that means don't do things impulsively. Don't run ahead of the Father. Stand firm in what he said and wait until he fulfills what he said he's going to fulfill. Don't try to make it happen. Don't do things in haste. That is what the enemy does. That's how he operates. So he tries to push us out to run ahead of the Father, to run ahead of the Holy Spirit. The scripture says, keep, uh, keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Don't do things in haste. Trust in him in his time when he's going to bring about and accomplish what he promises. 
to those of you who are seeking him, whatever that is that you're seeking him on. Because there's things that need to be done. There's other people involved in bringing all this to fulfillment. There's things he's trying to work in your life and bring to the forefront so that can be dealt with. And then he can accomplish. I apologize for this, uh, this recording getting uh, cut off. I received a phone call, unexpected phone call, and it just stopped the recording. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and read further. I think the point was made about not doing things in haste and running ahead of the Father because there's so much that's involved with him fulfilling what he said he will do, especially on those things that you were seeking him on and you're so concerned about those mountains that need to be moved. So we're going to go ahead and read um, uh, Isaiah 53, 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of Yahuwah been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. So I know this is talking about our, our Messiah, about him being rejected. This is pointing to Messiah, but this we can, we can uh, declare as well that we can say who has believed our report. Who, ha who is going to believe what the word of God says? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? To us as people. His arm is not too short to work on your behalf. He has much more power than the power that is being wielded by the unseen forces, the fallen watchers, the demonic strongholds, those who are giving over, given over to the God of this world. He holds the key. He holds the power. His arm is not too short. Whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the word, his word that is true? Or are you going to believe the word of man? Are you going to believe what they're saying and the lies that they're putting out there? And the fear that they're putting out there, the intimidation, flexing their strong arm. Well, we know whose arm is much stronger. That's where you need to put your faith and trust, beloved. And the arm of Yahuwah Elohim that is not too short to reach in your situation and help you with what you need help. With his deliverance. With what he is going to fulfill in your lives. As you continue to trust. Stand firm on the things that he said he's going to do without wavering. I'm going to go to Mark 16, 16. All right. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So not only those who stand firm and, and in their relationship and maintain their walk in their relationship with him, but also baptism is important. Okay? Not only just believing in him, putting your faith and trust and clinging and relying upon him and giving your life totally, totally, totally to him, but also baptism is important. So just a little side note, for those of you who have not yet been baptized, seek the Father. I'm not talking about when you were a baby or, you know, uh, or if you, you, you kind of did it half-hearted. I'm talking about truly baptized, as was Yeshua was our example, for righteousness sake. He was baptized. That's not a metaphor. Water baptism is part of the salvation process. Seek him and ask him what to do and who, who he, can, uh, he will use to baptize you. Any one of us can baptize one another. We had a baptism that me and another sister did for another one. We did it because she didn't have anybody in her area. So we did it uh, using my stream yard, uh, uh, a previous broadcast, bringing them in and we did this. It was so, so powerful. So 
and and this is I'm not don't want to just focus on the baptism. I'm, I'm focusing on belief. For those who don't believe, those who don't stand firm with him, endure with him till the end, stay their hearts and their minds close and near to him. You'll be. It says you'll be condemned. It says it right here. Right? Where am I at? Yeah, well, I just, <laughs> I think it's Mark. Yeah, Mark 16, 16. It says that. Um, and those, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And I'm not talking about those who believe in Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people that believe in him, but they don't believe in him. <laughs> they use the word believe loosely. But if they knew what the word believe meant, that means a total commitment, a total being establishing yourself in him, being supported by him, standing for, firm and trusting in him with your life every moment of every day that he gives you breath, conforming yourself to him and to his ways. That is what it means to be established being built up in him, in your most holy faith. It's more than just saying, I believe. It's an action. It's something that you partake in as you pursue him and he pursues you and accomplishes his will in your life. So let's see what else we have. I have, um, I have the word... Okay, and here, let me let me read this. This is interesting. When I read to you the definition of faith, or I, shall I say believe, that came from Genesis 15, 6, in, in Isaiah 28 and Isaiah 53. That word believe is, is the definition of standing firm, trusted, being built upon, supported by, established, steadfast. Now, the believe that I just, the definition of believe in the Greek that I read to you about in Mark, and then I'll read to you in, in John. There's another one in Mark, so I'll read to you another one that's in Mark and in John. This word believe means persuaded, to put your confidence in, to have you to be convicted by in other words he is our conviction to trust in and to give yourself wholly to to be fully committed to there you go so we have in the hebrew believe and then to even add to that in the greek the believe is something more than just Believing that Christ existed and that when he, he died on the cross for your sins. It's an action. Your believing is, is your, he is your conviction. He is your confidence. It's who you put your full trust in. Give yourself wholly to and commit yourself to every day. Every day throughout the day. That's what believe means. Okay. I'm going to read John 1. So now when you know when he says those who don't believe will be condemned, this is what we're talking about. For those who don't put their confidence in him and give themselves wholly to him and who don't open themselves up to the conviction that the Holy Spirit brings when he wants to deal with areas that you're still holding on to that he's telling you to let go of. Different sins, addictions, strongholds in your life. So let's read John 1.12. John. Okay, here we go. One twelve. Get the right. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Elohim. 
So those who believe, who put their confidence in, their trust in, give themselves wholly to, he gave the right to become his children. Because we are not born, it's not because of us being from any bloodline, uh, like those people who believe and think because you're Jewish, you're, you're the chosen people. Uh-uh. This has nothing to do with your blood, not a blood, nor the will of the flesh. Not even of your flesh and what your flesh wants, nor of the will of man. But it's of, it's of Elohim. John 3, 18 and 36. Let's see, that's 10. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Elohim. And as I said, I'm not just talking about believing that you believe that he's the Son of Elohim, that he died for your sins. Again, it's an action. It's who you're putting your trust in. It's giving yourself wholly to and fully committing to and placing your absolute confidence in him and not man. I know I do repeat these things, but faith comes by hearing and continually he hearing. We need to hear these things repeated because we don't get it. He he has to keep repeating these things because, you know, when they say uh, um, thick-headed, we really are. We really don't get it. It takes a long time and it takes comp re repetition of hearing these things over and over again. To, that will build up our faith and to where these things will now start going from here to our hearts where it becomes a reality and it becomes our experience. It becomes what we walk out and now live these things out. Okay, uh, 336. He who believed believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim abides in him. So you can see how important it is for us to believe. So when I say all things are possible, Lord, I believe. Whatever it is, beloved, you are going through, believe is very important. You cannot be double-minded, and you cannot be, you cannot waver when it comes to believing. When it comes to believing what he said he's going to do, all things are possible to them who are persuaded. All things are possible to those who put their confidence in the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, by his indwelt Holy Spirit. All things are possible to those who trust in and give themselves wholly to the Father and his Son and his Spirit and who put there, who are fully committed to. So I hope and pray that this was an encouragement to you all. And I do need to read one more. I believe it was Mark 9. Let me read Mark 9, 24. I had no idea what I was going to share it with because he always gives me something when I do my top five recommended videos. And I thought how appropriate to share with you a praise report of what he accomplished and what he did and the battle that may, that I and this family went through and struggled and having to deal with and stand firm even when the faith of those that are in this household were wavering. But we can still stand in the gap. He, had, he didn't rely on their faithlessness, but on the faith and the trust and believing that the Father was going to do and he was going to answer my prayer according to his will that he did what he did on my behalf and my daughter's behalf because we stand in the gap intercession means that we stand in the gap for we believe for like Jesus said on the cross forgive them for they know not what they do like Stephen said when he was being stoned do not hold this charge against them forgive them that's why we need to stand in the gap and forgive because many of them, they, they, they've had years of bondage and strongholds and addictions to where we need to intercede and stand in the gap and pray for, for, for and stand in the gap for their forgiveness. 
and for the Father to work in their life. And that's what we do. We stand in the gap. Even when they're wavering, even when they're, they're not walking in faith. He, it's, it's the faith of his people. It's our faith and our trusting and our believing, relying and putting our full confidence and being fully committed to him and his ways and his word and his promises and standing firm in that and not wavering. Does he answer us even for those that were, are, are, are wavering and struggling? So that should give you some hope and some, um, and, and should hopefully uplift your heart and soul to know that he is able to do the impossible as he did in my life and my family. He's not a respecter of persons. This isn't because he thinks I'm more special. I'm not. I'm just his child. I'm his daughter. I love him so very much. And he loves me and he loves you. And you're his son or you're his daughter. You belong to his body and he loves you. He knows what you're going through. But he's encouraging when you and telling you don't doubt. Do not. You will not enter in. Scripture, I didn't even read that one. He says they hardened their heart, hearts because of unbelief. They couldn't enter into the promised, promised land. You will not enter it and receive if you are going to walk in unbelief and you're going to waver and not trust that he is able to work in your life, whatever that is, because he knows what's best. So now we're going to switch gears and I'm going to go ahead and read to you uh, my top five highly recommended videos, bonus videos, and more. The first bonus, uh, the first uh, um, recommended video is titled One Mind, One Authority. Now there's two videos in this one. This is a part one and the part two, let me get this here and scroll down. The part two is, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. This is a very, these are very powerful insights as to who the governing authority we are to submit to mentioned in Romans 13, and it's connected to Matthew 10. I highly recommend you watch both of these videos by Brother Andy, West Texas. I have to say par excellence, brother. Also, our brother Andy sent me this to my phone, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to Elohim. So he gives uh, ambassador what that means. Learn to pronounce ambassadors, an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. Diplomatic agents, that is high-ranking embassy officials, ambassadors, for example, who serve the function of dealing directly with their host countries, officials on behalf of their home country, enjoy the highest degree of immunity. That's what we are. That's what his ambassadors are that we can enjoy the highest degree of immunity, that we're called to be ambassadors and we're called to reconcile one another, to stay the course, to reconcile and bring and gather in those lost that he, that he is going to gather into his kingdom, back to the Father. We are those ambassadors. So I wanted to add that because I'm talking about Brother Andy and he just sent that to me. Uh, about two days ago. So I wanted to share that with you all as well. The second recommended video is titled Prophecy Update, Restraining the Evil, Sustaining the Righteous, September 19th by J.D. Farrag. These are some very incredible testimonies in the face of the increasing evil and the beast system, Mark mandates. Thank you, Ann Foster, for sharing this link with me. It's amazing how she shared this with me when I when I put out the, the good news about 
um, what happened to my daughter's dad. And of course, we're staying here. We live here. So that's why it was really important in, in praying for the father to work on our behalf. And here she sends this link. When you hear these testimonies, they are just amazing in the face of some impossibility, impossibilities. It really, really blessed me. And of course, he goes into some other things about uh, about um, the effects of these of these jabs. But it is really very, very encouraging. Um, my third recommended video is titled "Edward Umling." Special word for America in this last hour. Thank you, Deanna, for sharing this link for me to share this important message and confirmation I have received for his body to hear, especially the importance and urgency of repentance and water baptism. He has strongly moved on me to put out there. The fourth recommended video is the most powerful display of scripture, in my opinion, by sacrifice of trust. Even though this was, I don't know, I think it was five minutes long. It's a short video, but when you hear it, you know, we think the power, most powerful display that Yeshua did was raising the dead. But when you hear what this is, we have so much to learn, beloved. This was an amazing, short, sweet, and extremely powerful message that I would encourage you to, to listen to. And this is by uh, Sacrifice of Trust. Of the fifth recommended video, Ephesians 4, the most important thing to do during the end times by Noah Church. Now, when I share these videos, I do want you to know I'm not endorsing and saying you need to subscribe to their channels. If he gives me these and the Holy Spirit leads me to a, a specific message or something, it is because that particular message whoever it is by, when he puts it in my heart, is very anointed, and it truly is filled with the Holy Spirit. So this message that this brother put out, um, and um, I have to say, is such, such a right-on word of confirmation and healing from my own personal pain of dealing with two sisters in Christ who have cut me out of their lives, and even after seeking for forgiveness, as to what happened to Noah as well from a brother in Christ. I pray this message encourages and shows you his body, that his love is key to walking in unity together. Uh, I found out about this video from Karen, uh, Supernatural Life. Of course, she does have a um, another channel. Uh, uh, what I may do is put the link to her her, her new channel in the description. I don't have it here, but uh, I'll, I'll look, look to see about putting that up. And she's the one that mentioned about his video and how powerful it was. And I have to say, it is it is just, I had to stop and, and comment after 12 minutes. And I did watch the whole thing. And it is a message for us, beloved, that we need to take heed. A lots of scripture. And uh, it is such a now word uh, to deal with a lot of the dissension and the um, cutting one another off and the things that are going on that has just been out of control in the body of Christ. That's griefsome to the Father. I also posted the link below to the song Sadness Like a Shadow. This song was written years ago about the public lies and betrayal I experienced from some very close spiritual family that sent me down a very lonely and painful path that I have since been healed and forgave. I pray this song ministers to those of you who have been deeply hurt by another brother or sister in Christ or a group of believers, forgive as you have been forgiven and forgive their unforgiveness and their rejection. So that is, that concludes my top five highly recommended videos. And now this section is called, can you handle the truth bonus videos? So the first Can You Handle the Truth bonus video is titled The Dead Internet Theory by All Time. This link is what Tracy Shaw shared with me. Thank you, dear sister. Truly thank you, Tracy. 
I also enjoyed our, our fellowship and the things the Father was, was doing when we got together by way of phone. What a blessing. Such a blessing. I love you dearly. Can you begin to contemplate that over 60% of those flooding all the internet, which includes corporate tube, which was once YouTube, we are being gaslighted to be distracted, to divide, and to fight against one another, that these bots and AI, and I call it artificial internet, has created in order to conquer and to bring us into their hive, demonic beast, artificial, and fake mind, their fake mindset. So that was just what I got out of that that I wanted to share with you about this video. It's pretty, uh, pretty eye-opening. My second Can You Handle the Truth bonus video is what did Jen Psaki say marked people? Now, a lot of you probably already saw this one, but there's some of you who haven't, and I would recommend you watch it. It's very short, and it's by Watergate channel. And the scripture I put is Revelation 13, 16, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. I capped in because many of you have been waiting for something on when it was coming from the inside out. Please check out, here's another one. Um, Okay, I was wondering. <laughs> Let me just um, do something here. Okay. Please check out what Lisa Sabbath Seeker shared from her September 15th update video starting at 3 minutes and 27 seconds. It's very important that you watch this. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but started at 3 minutes and 27 seconds. And this, the scripture I got after watching it is 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay, so let's put... The fourth, Can You Handle the Truth?, bonus video is titled the the vax underscore zine idol who is your savior by tracy bonenfont that is another excellent video and the last i always seem to get five just like the top five i usually get the, the last can You Handle the Truth bonus video is titled Shock Video. Senior doctors and a marketing director in North Carolina discussed inflating CV1 equals A, non equals I numbers by counting recovered patients as active CV injected patients. This is the quote. We need to be more scary to the public. If you don't get jabbed, underscore vaccinated, you know you're going to die. So you will see that Zoom meeting when you click on the link below. So that concludes my Can You Handle the Truth bonus videos. And of course, as the Holy Spirit has directed me to always share with these bonus videos for those who need to come to true salvation in Yeshua Jesus, you can click on the link below titled Salvation, the Greatest Gift by Linda Rose Spirit Song. That's what the Holy Spirit gave me a few years back. It has been since revised. Um, and I got to share it and read it on my previous top five recommended videos. So for those who want to hear it, what I may do is put the link to that and the time when I read it. I'll see about putting that and adding that in the description as well. So you can also share this link as the Spirit leads you to those of your family, friends, and your neighbors. Print it out, whatever you want. Hebrews 4.13 says, And there is not a created thing not manifested before him, but all things are naked and open to his eyes, with whom is our reckoning. 
and to whom we are to give an account. All of us, doesn't matter who, we will all give an account. He sees everything. I pray that for those of you who do not know him and who are not truly saved, there's a lot of you out there, you think because you're Christian um, that you're saved, but there's a lot of you who are not because it's not the title by which saves you or that you say you believe in Jesus. But I already read to you what believe really means. And a lot of those who claim to be believers are not believing, are not walking in that, giving themselves wholly to the Lord in every area of their life. So below now are links to my ongoing weekly special music playlist, Spirit Song music videos, and the Spirit Song Reverb Nation music page. And on my Reverb Nation music page, uh, you can download the songs there for free. So I put the links to, to all of that below. And also below is my ongoing weekly recommended links for teaching and equipping the saints, the Spiritual Warfare All-in-One by Derek Prince, Revelations of Jesus Christ is back up and Rumble Channel and website. The Once Lost and Now Found Sheep and Jimmy Vision, the Doctrines of Christ series. And uh, below are also more additional, urgent and must-see weekly videos, which include It's Worse Than You Think, the full six-hour documentary by Brother Wally, Revelations of Jesus Christ, which he put all on his Rumble Channel. And also the Mark of the Beast, Part 1, 2, and 3, the panel study and discussion. This is a very important series that ties so much of what we see unfolding from the book of Revelations being fulfilled before our eyes in real time. So that, beloved, concludes my top five highly recommended videos. Can you handle the truth bonus videos and more? And then, of course, the message that the Holy Spirit gave me to share with you all that I pray was an encouragement and something that you can search deeply and pray about before the Father. I want you to know that I do love you and I am praying for, for you all. The Father loves you, His Son loves you so much and He loves you so much that He doesn't want to leave you where you presently are because He has so much more for you. Never be satisfied with where you are presently in your walk. Always strive to continue to go upward and onward and higher in that call, in that purpose, in that relationship with him. So until we come together again, beloved brothers and sisters in Yeshua Messiah, I bid you all shalom. Hold up.